Oh wait. Don't we called it change in X. And how did we find the change in X? Uh, whatever they gave you subtract Yeah. So you would do like B minus A divided by four or whatever it was, right? The furthest, shortest divided by the subintervals, correct? So instead of height on these trapezoids, we're going to use change in X. And then how would we get these heights? For this one and this one. This would be f of a. This would be f of b. So if I have um, trapezoids that touch, correct? Change in x would be for here. This would be f of a, f of b times this divided by 2. We agree? So add those up. Okay. What if I did this triangle, though, or this trapezoid? It'd be f of b and then technically f of c. So how many f of b's do I actually have when I'm adding this up? Two. Two. And then if I stopped here, I'd have one f of a and one f of c. Do you agree? If I added another one, then that's up there. Okay. Then I would get an f of c for this side, an f of d for this side, and now I would actually have f of a, two f of b's, two f of c's, and an f of d. So wherever I start and wherever I end, I'm only going to have one of those. And everyone in the middle gets doubled up, right? Because you use it for each trapezoid. We agree? So, if I had change in x in all of these, I'm multiplying them all by change in x. Could I not just GCF a change in x out of the formula, at the very front of the formula, instead of multiplying them all by it? Yes. Okay? So keep that in mind when I give you what the trapezoid rule formula actually is. So we always end up with one f of a, one of the last ones, and two of all the middles. Correct? And I can pull a change in x out in the front instead of multiplying them all out. Because what I could do is I could do the area of each trapezoid separately and then add them all up. But that would take longer than just using the trapezoid rule. So this is the formula for trapezoid rule. Oh my gosh. Can I hit the light, Seamus? It got awfully dark. Okay. <laughs> 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 Darker than usual. Okay, Zach Chuck. All right. <laughs> One in every crowd. This class happens to have 20 in every 29. Okay. I think there's 24 of you. It'd be 20 and 24. <laughs> it is darker than usual right now, is it not? I think it's because it's gloomy. Yeah. It's because it snowed. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> all right. So here is the formula we're going to use. And we're obviously going to use an integral because it fits in integrals. Okay? So we're going to go from a to b, f of x dx. So if they ask you to find from a to b, f of x dx using the trapezoidal rule, you still write a to b f of x dx, right? Or whatever f of x happens to be. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go change in x because you can bring it out, correct? We can bring the change in x out. But what was the formula for trapezoid? a plus b times change in x divided by 2. So if we're dividing by 2 in every single one of them, can I not take a division of 2 out? And if we're not multiplying by um, change in x by every single one, can't I just take that out? So in the front of the trapezoid rule, I have change in x over 2, because I'm taking it out of every term. Then what followed behind? a plus b, and then b plus c, and then c plus d, and then d plus e, and then e. So we're doubling up the a and b, b and c, c and d, d and, or a and b, b and c, c and d, d and e. So we're doubling up the d's, we're doubling up the c's, we're doubling up everything but the first one and the last one, because it stands alone and stands alone, that, that length doesn't get shared. We agree? So how they write it out in the actual formula is they go f of x0. So that would be the first, the initial spot where we stop. And then plus, now I want to do x1 would be the next one, but how many do I have? 2 f of x1 plus dot 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 plus 2 f of x n minus 1 and then plus f of xn. 
Do we need to memorize that? No, we need to memorize that you are going to have a change in x in every single one. So I can take the change in x out. Trapezoid area has division by 2. So we have to take change in two, or divide by 2 out. And then I take the first length, this length doubled, this length doubled, this length doubled, this length doubled, till I get to the end, and I do it once. Right? So only our end ones don't get doubled. So it should make sense. You shouldn't have to memorize it. Okay. So here's our example for it. We're going to try one. So use the trapezoidal rules. People will be like, I don't know when I'm supposed to use it, when it says use the trapezoidal rule. Other than that, it'll say um, the sum using left Riemann sums, right Riemann sums, midpoints, right? Or trapezoidal rule. So you use what they tell you. Use the trapezoidal rule. And you're still calculating area under a curve. And this is still better than the other ones because you get that slanted top. So if there's a curved graph, it kind of doesn't have as much over and doesn't have as much under. Yes, sir. Okay. With five subintervals, to approximate, and it's approximate because it could be under and still or over, right? Because it doesn't, it won't be perfectly accurate. One to two, one over x dx. So whether it's right, left, midpoint, or trapezoidal, I will always find my change in x first. And how do I find that? Yeah. So it's b minus a divided by n, the number of subintervals, right? So it's going to be 2 minus 1 divided by 5, which is 1 fifth, which is 0 decimal 2. And I'm happy that it's a non-terminating decimal, or it's a terminating decimal, so I don't have to keep the fraction. <clears throat> so what I tell you next time to do, so you get your f ofs, make a number line, right? Do a number line so you have all the values at which you're going to hit. If it was left Riemann sums, you pick all the left ones but not the furthest right. If it's right Riemann sums, you pick all of them but the furthest left. If it's midpoint, you find them all and then you find the midpoint of all of them and use that as your f, right? So for these ones, it's 0.2. So we're going to start at 1 and then 1.2, 1.4. 1.6, 1.8, and then 2. And because it's trapezoidal rule, I'm going to do f of 1, then how many of 1.2s? 2. How many of 1.4s? 2, 1.6, 2, 1.8, 2, and how many of 2s? 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1 again. So let's set up the formula first. So we're going to go 1 to 2. 1 over x dx equals, now the first thing I start off with change in x divided by 2, because that's the formula, correct? Change in x is 0 decimal 2 divided by 2. And then I go 1 of the first 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, right? So I'm going to do f of 1 plus 2f of 1.2s plus 2f of 1.4s plus 2f of 1.6s, plus 2f of 1.8, and then plus just an f of 2. I don't know why I don't. Does that make sense? Now, if your f of 1s and f of 1.2s are kind of ugly, I would do them off to the side and solve them all out first and then just input their answer right, into the formula. These ones aren't too bad, but I'm still going to do it off the side to prove it. So if I do f of 1, it's going to be 1 divided by 1, which is 1, because we're filling it into this f formula, right? And then f of 1.2 is 1 divided by 1.2, which is what? That's hard. <clears throat> Eight point three 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 repeating, right? Yeah, so I'm just going to leave it because you can leave it as a fraction. So f of one point four. Sometimes it's better to just leave them how they are. One point four <clears throat> because they're going to get multiplied by two as well. 
So this is f of 1.6, f of 1.8, and then f of 2 is a half. Do you have to show these off to the side when they're this simple? No. But sometimes it's a polynomial and you actually have to plug it in and get an answer, right? And then you have these big long polynomials just sitting in there times 2 be a lot. So 0 0.2 divided by 2 is 0 0.1. And then I'm going to get 1 plus 2 times 1 over 1 1.2 plus 2 times 1 over 1 1.4 plus 2 times 1 over 1.6 plus 2 times 1 over 1.8 plus 2, 1 half. So type it in, see if everyone gets the right answer. To three decimal places, you should get this. So everyone try it out. Like Maylee said, though, if, um, if they give you a chart and it's not equal subintervals, you'd actually have to find the area of each trapezoid separately, right? Because your change in x might not be... 0.2, your change in x might be 0.4, then 0.2, then da 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 da. And if that's the case, you'd have to go 0.4 divided by 2, um, a plus b, right? And then you'd have to go 0.2 divided by 2, a, whatever the new a plus b is. So you would actually have to do them separately and then add them up. <clears throat> but if they're all the same change in interval, then you're fine. Oh, wait. Well, there you go, that. We'll change it up. Okay. <laughs> So that's all trapezoidal rule is. It's kind of in a really weird section. It's 7, 6, 7.6 standalone, but it's in the curriculum, so we show it. It doesn't really fit in the rest. Okay. Then we're going to do substitution rule. So after the break, we're going to do, I was going to do area between curves before, but I'm going to do it and volumes of revolution together after, because you need areas between curves in order to do volumes of revolution. So you might as well learn them together. Sorry? Obviously, yeah. Up to this. Yeah. How much is the final word? Your final? Yeah. I gave you a course outline. You should go left. It's funny. I have thrown out a debate of putting it to 10, but I'm going to wait and see how hard you work in the last two weeks. I'm doing it based on how hard people work in the last two weeks. And I get the results in July, so that would suck for you. No. Okay. And coming from the person who's not right. Okay. Substitution rules. So, um, so far, what we've done for integrals is we've done ones where you just have to do the antiderivative of it. So they're blatant ones that we've learned before. So it might be like power rule that we undo, correct? Or it might be a log, like 1 over x turns to a ln. Or it might be an e to the x was an e to the x. Something like that where we've learned it. Or it was a sign, we can go work back to negative cos, right? It's all those. But there's certain instances when you look at it and you're like, man, none of that works. It kind of looks like a product rule. When it kind of looks like a product rule or it kind of looks like a quotient rule, you're going to use substitution. And you should be happy because it's the only thing you have to learn. There are, way out, there are way more other ones, but they're not in this curriculum yet, so you know that if it doesn't fit there, it's substitution rule. Also, sometimes people will fight me and they'll be like, this isn't substitution and this isn't normal. It can't be in the curriculum. But it's in a calculator section. Do you have to do it algebraically if it's in a calculator section? No. So they put it in the calculator section because they're testing your calculator skills. They're testing if you can find from here to here using the integral button. So people will sit for days trying to solve it with substitution, and I'm like, they literally just want you to type it in their calculator. That's it. So that's the way they can force it to be in your calculator is to make it that you can't do it algebraically. Right? So keep that in mind. It's in the calculator section, and it's an integral. They literally want you to type it in. Okay. So here's example one. And then I'll talk to you about how the substitution rule works. So we have find, the find word, I love it so much. Uh, is this a definite or indefinite integral? Indefinite because it's not defined between two values, right? Indefinite means it's open from one whole way to another whole way. Oops. X cubed cos 
x to the 4 plus 2 dx. So it kind of looks like it's a product rule, doesn't it? Do you see that? If it was x cubed standing alone, if there was a plus sign between those, you could have possibly try it. The cos with the x4 plus 2 inside of it kind of causes a little bit of heart palpitation. So um, when it looks like a product rule, or when you have a cos, a tan, or an e, something like that, and it has something beside it more than just an x, you have to use substitution rule. So if you haven't, rem haven't noticed yet, whenever I've given you an integral so far, it's been sine x, or cos x, or tan x. This one is cos x4 plus 2, okay? So substitution rule makes you substitute. It's kind of crazy how they use substitution rule for substituting. But um, properly formed, it's not like they called it the let method or something and changed everything else. This is like properly named. Substitution rule because it's substitute. Like lock of cow. It's the lefty rule. So I'm going to call it from now on. I didn't make it up. I'm going to take credit. Okay. Uh, so what we have to do often is we're going to pick something that when we derive it, it's going to get rid of the other something. Most often it's what's sitting beside your coat, your sign, or your tan, if there is a trig ratio. So in this case, if there's trig, we are going to go x4 plus 2. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go uh, u equals x4 plus 2. It's always u because they often call it u substitution. They often call it U substitution. So I'm going to do U equals X4 plus 2. Now keep in mind this. This is what you need to keep in mind with substitution. If I have more than one variable and I derive something, I would get DUs and DRs over DT and DX over DT and DY over DT, right? You have to do implicit. So you'd have to have a lot of work working back if you left it as a DX. Do you see that there's a DX there? I'm going to go and I'm going to partially just do this for a second. I'm going to leave everything else, but I'm going to have cos of u. We know that much because I can plug u in for that now because that's why I said it equals, right? My problem lies, though, that if I put just the u there, I still have an x cubed and I still have a dx. Do you see that? And I can't do the antiderivative until they're all u's. Okay? <clears throat> so your first step is to pick one of the u's. And if you pick the wrong one, you're going to know within seconds you pick the wrong one because it's not going to solve the problems. So I pick a u, and then I derive that u. So the derivative of u is just du. The derivative of x4 is? Nope. 4x cubed dx. Not the antiderivative. Oh. The derivative. Hmm? Because there's, it wouldn't, it would be with respect. Like when we go, we did dy over dx or whatever it was when it was implicit. This one doesn't have a basis. We don't know what it's with respect to, dt or d. So we just write dx and du. So like when we did implicit, we went dy with respect to x. We go dy over dx, then we went dx over dx, and the x is cancelled. When it was rate of change, we knew it was with respect. We knew it was with respect to time, so we'd go dr over dt or dy over dt or whatever variables we had, dv over dt. These ones we don't have with respect to anything, so we just write du and dx. And none of them can cancel off because we don't have the respect to. All right, so I know I need to replace an x cubed and a dx. Now, I lose people here. I'm just going to show you. I could rewrite this, just so you can see it. I could rewrite this as x cubed dx cos x4 plus 2. Could I not? Because they're all multiplied, I can just order them around. Like this is multiplied by this is multiplied by this. So I could reorder them all I wanted to. Correct? And currently, I want to get x cubed and dx to become u's. We agree? If they become u's, I can do the antiderivative of it, uh, hopefully. If not, the substitution rule didn't work. Um, now, I want to replace x cubed and dx. I want to replace x cubed and dx. I currently have 4x cubed dx. How can I get the 4 to go away? Divide by 4. Dividing by 4 is like multiplying by 1 quarter. So I could just put a quarter in front of here, correct? So I actually have 1 quarter du equals x cubed dx. Do you agree? So I can take this x cubed dx, I can toss it out, and I can replace it with 1 quarter du. Do you see that? 
So if I rewrote it like this, I could put the one quarter du in front. They never write it in this order though. And what did I tell you about integrals? What can you do with coefficients of an integral? You can take it out because it's a monomial, right? Like this is one term. If it was like one quarter cos u plus three quarters, something, then I couldn't just take a quarter out, right? I would have to split it into separate integrals, then take it out. I want to do it that way. So I can write one quarter, and then they'll write it as cos u du. Because they always put the du at the back. Now we can do the antiderivative of that. What's the antiderivative of cos u? Sine u, right? That's all it is. So we're going to get one quarter is going to sit out here. Then I'm going to do the antiderivative of cos u. When I work cos back, it's sine u. And then what do I add at the back? Plus c. And then I can put my u back in because I solved all my problems. One quarter sine x4 plus 2 plus c. Okay. Example two. Evaluate. Hmm? I like evaluate. It's better than find. Find is like, there it is. I found it. <laughs> Sounds silly. But... Okay, I like um, determine personally, but beggars can be choosers. So we have 2x plus 1 dx. So this doesn't look like a power rule, but it does look like a chain rule, right? So anything advanced on like a power rule, like if it's a product, a quotient, it kind of looks like a chain. A lot of the time for us, well, because we're not actually expanding into way more integrals than we started, it's going to be substitution rules. So what am I going to replace with u? 2x plus 1, because if I change, this is not rocket science. You know, people will sit here and not think to do that. So you have to spot it and go, hey, I can do a chain rule. If I can do a chain rule, what can I do? If I put a u under there, it's u to the half, and I can do the power rule then, right? Reverse power rule, I'm good at that. So I can go u equals 2x plus 1. The catch is that would cause this to become square root u, which is good. But what do I still have sitting here? The dx. And the dx needs to become a du. And you can't just say, ah, du. Like, you can't just write that and be like, fix the problem. I have people do that. Okay? You can't do that. How you're going to replace that du is by taking the derivative of what you just made u. So over here, the derivative of u is du, and it's going to equal to dx, because we always have to put an x behind it. Now, I need to replace just dx. So what am I going to do? Divide by 2. Now, you don't always divide by 2 because sometimes you're replacing 2 dx, right? And then you wouldn't move it over. So it just depends on what you need. I only need just dx. So I'm going to divide by 2, which is multiplied by a half. So I get 1 half du equals dx. So instead of dx, I have 1 half du. What can I do with the half because it's a monomial? Take it out front. And we should have equal signs running down this because this equals this equals one half u to the half, because square root of u is complicated for u. Then when I do the antiderivative of u to the half, I'm going to get, add a one to one half, I get three halves. And then I have to divide by three halves, so what do I get actually in front? Two thirds. You get the reciprocal of it, right? So I'm going to get two thirds u to the three halves, plus c. The twos are going to cancel, so I'm going to get one third, and then I can put the u back in, 2x plus 1. The moment you take the antiderivative of it, the moment the integral is gone, you can replace your u back in, right? You fixed your problem. 3 halves. Let's see. Let me get you guys to try this one. 
We have a few to go through. We're also going to do definite ones. When they're defined, there's an extra step. Example three. Find, back to find, x over 1 minus 4x squared, the square root of that. Yes. Try it out. So the catch on this one is you want to replace x dx because I know that this is going to be square root of u and then I'm still left with an x dx sitting here. Well, x dx equals negative one quarter du. Yep. Mm, yep. Really fancy eights. All right, so this would just say a 1, technically. And then we'd get times negative 1 8 u, which I'm going to write as negative 1 8 u to the negative 1 half du. And u to the <laughs> negative 1 half is fine. The only one that you can't do power rule with is u to the negative 1. Don't write this. I'm just, this is like a caveat off to the side. u to the negative 1, if you ever get that, you would raise this to the power, add a 1, so it would become a 0, and then you divide by 0. Wait, I can't divide by 0. What happens when you get a u to the negative 1? <clears throat> What's the antiderivative of it, sorry? <clears throat> it would be ln absolute value of u. Now c. Whenever you have u to the negative 1, x to the negative 1, c to the negative 1, doesn't matter. That's the same as 1 over u. Du. Remember, 1 over x was the answer to ln x, the derivative of it. So it needs to <clears throat> it needs to pop into your head that when you raise the exponent to 1, when you add 1 to it, you're going to get 0 and you're going to divide by 0. And you'll be like, wait a second, I can't divide by 0. When I can't divide by 0, Mrs. Lepp told me it was something. Dig deep, dig deep. What the heck did she tell me it was? Oh, it was ln of that variable, ln of x, right? And you do absolute value because we don't know what the x is. In this case, we do absolute value of u because we don't know what the u is and we can't have a negative or a zero beside our ln, right? So that's why we always put the absolute value when we're not sure what the variable is. Okay? So when you raise the power of zero, you might not raise a red flag, but then when you divide by zero, be like, wait a second, we've been here before. What, what happened? Okay? <clears throat> this one's okay because when I add one to it, I'm going to get u to the half, correct? And then I divide by a half, which is 2. And then I put a plus c. And what's 2 times negative 1 8? Negative 1 4. The u can come back after I differentiate it, which uh, it was 1 minus 4 x squared uh, to the half plus c. Or what might they do instead of putting it to the half? Or it. So I just put these two together, that got me negative a quarter, and then u I put back in, and u was this. Right? <laughs> Not going to lie, after May 12th or whatever, the one thing, I, I'll miss so many things. I, there's a list of things, infinite list of things I'll miss. One thing I will not miss is your freakout mode that happens in every lesson. Well, I'm done. Basically failing this. Why am I coming back? It's like half the class. Some people are internally freaking out. I can tell on your faces. The other ones are going like this while I'm teaching it. And then the other ones are like, Shane, they're like, yeah, well, I'm done. Not coming back. Why don't I just call it a loss? Drop the mic. Walking out. Like, that's right. Yeah. You're just uh, virtually speaking what everyone else is thinking. But that's one thing that I might not miss. Just saying, you know? I would like to be a little fly on the wall in, like, classes in university sometimes. It's just, like, it would be fun. Hmm? 
No, I, I just said there's infinitely many things I'm going to miss about you. You're like my daughter. She does, I'll say like to my other daughter, I'll be like, wow, you look cute in that. And the other one will be like, so you're telling me I don't look cute? I'm like, I didn't even speak to you. Yeah, it's so fun. Yeah, go grandpa. Okay, example four. Calculate. E to the 5x dx. What's my problem? Oh, I have many problems, but what's my problem in this question? <laughs> Variable exponent. Not, yeah, ish, ish, my problem. What's the problem? If it was just an x, I'd have no problems because it would just be e to the x plus c. Correct? It's the 5x, that's my problem. Yeah? Yeah. If I can, so remember that once you replace your u, once you replace your u, correct? Your problem should be gone once you've replaced your u. So I know that if I take the 5x out and I go e to the u, ah, answer, e to the u, that's the best antiderivative out there. I said I throw a party when I get e to the x's or e to the u's or e to whatever. Because the antiderivative of it is the same thing. They're in my head. I have a party. That's fine. So, I'm going to do it over here. U equals 5x. And then du equals what? 5dx. I only need to replace the dx. So, what am I going to do? Yeah. Divide by 5, which is actually just 150u equals dx. So now I go and replace. So I never work out of the question. I rewrite the question. When you work out of the question and then tell them they didn't give you enough space because you're working from the question spot, that's on you. Okay? You, you rewrite the question. And then we get e to the u, and then dx becomes one-fifth the u. One-fifth can come out. And what's the antiderivative of EU, DU? EU, and then just plus C. I don't know what you said. Probably better I don't. All right. And I'm done. This is what happy people do all the time. They box it and they're done. I am not done. What did I not do? The question started with X's. So it needs to end with X's. That's actually the answer. Okay. <laughs> We're going to look at example five. It has a little, little trick. The last two have little tricks to them, but we're... Yes. There'll be no freaking out. I believe in you. Okay. Fine. Square root of 1 plus x squared, x to the 5 is outside of it, dx. So x to the 5 is not under the square root sign. I expect in about one minute someone to be asking me, is x to the 5 under the square root sign? Fully expect it. Make sure your phones are not out. You will be the person who's asking it. Maybe in your mind, but you will. So what would I take as my u? What's under the square root, right? Because that's my problem. Yes, the x to the 5 is my problem as well, because it's going to need to change to u's. But um, if I get u to the half, instead of square root 1 plus x squared, I can do that. So I'm going to go u equals um, 1 plus x squared. Okay? Now let's take the du of that. 2x dx. And then people are like, rut row, there's an x to the 5. I'm going to have an x. We've got problems, yo. That's what you're thinking. Okay? Exactly like that. Exactly like that. Grant stuff, Chuck talks about that all the time. So, um, I'm going to rewrite the question because that's what a, a good person does. <gasps> Thank <laughs> you.
Oh. Okay. What can I change? Grant told me I have to delete the podcast now because I um, said his name. Yeah. Maybe I'll let it slide. <laughs> 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 For a few left people. Oh, I see where you're going with this. I see where you're at. I don't need this podcast. <laughs> Yes, you do. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to get lappy bucks from the, your fellow um, humans that are not here. Yeah, but we can't trade lappy bucks. Oh yes, you can. Connor just gave Grant some. He's using more names. Connor has given all of his lappy bucks. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's true. But you did steal Lucas lappy buck. Okay, so. Shh. Quiet, please. So what we need to do is we know we can replace a single x dx, correct? So I know if I split x5 up into x4 times x dx, I know I can get rid of this and I can get rid of this. We agree? So let's do a little replacey. A little replacey, replacey. So we get square root u and then x dx, I have to divide by 2. So I get 1 half du equals x dx. Um, so then in the back I can get one half du. Not my problem still sits with this x to the 4. Is there anywhere in here that I could possibly find something that's x to the 4 or a variating friend of it? People are just randomly shouting things out that don't make sense. Okay. I appreciate you. Uh, some people are like, just erase it. No, that doesn't work either. Okay. If I look at u, my, uh, u equals, this is fuzzy. If I go look at u equals 1 plus x squared, I can arrange, rearrange that to have it equal x squared. So I can go u minus 1 equals x squared. x to the 4 is how many x squareds? 2. So instead of writing x4, I could write u minus 1 squared to the power of 2. So sometimes they're not easy. They're kind of complicated because it still looks like power rule here. So I'm going to take the half out. I should equal sign right now. Take the half out. Here I'm going to get u to the half. And then I can expand this out. Because remember, the only way I can do the antiderivative mostly is if it's like a plain cos, a plain tan, a plain e to the x, a uh, power rule question I can do. Right? So I have to expand this out. I'm going to get u squared minus 2u plus 1 du. And then what can I do? Put the half in. If I put it in, then I can just do a reverse power rule. So I'm going to get u to the half times u to the 2. What do I do when I have two bases, two exponents that are the same? Wait, what? <laughs> I'm going to say no. I don't know what you said, but I firmly believe no. <laughs> two bases, two exponents, when you multiply them, what do you do? You add them. Grade 10 has been a killer for you, me, and the world right now. That grade 10 is. So we're going to go u to the half, u to the two. When we multiply them, we have to add exponents. So we're going to get u to the... Guys, you're not multiplying the exponents, you're adding them. 2 plus a half is 2 and a half. 2.5 is a fraction, is 5 over 2. Uh, that is not the same thing as 1. Very different. That is not close to 1. 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3. What the heck is bothering me? 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3. Well, you missed this part. She's a part. There's a few things I will miss. This might not be one of them. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go u to the half times negative 2 u to the 1 is negative 2, and then u to the half times u to the 1 is a half plus 1, which is 1 and a half, which is 3 halves. This last one we won't screw up because we're multiplying by 1. u to the half times 1. If you do the half, yes, you would. You would say one. Okay, so we can do the answer of this because it is just power rule now. 
So we get one half. Now, u to the 5 halves, if we add 1 to it, we're adding 2 over 2. So we actually get u to the 7 halves. And then what do we get in front? 2 over 7. Now, 3 halves plus 1 is 3 halves plus 2 over 2. So it's 5 over 2. And then we have a negative 2 in front that we're going to times by 2 fifths, the flip of that. And then plus u to the half if I add 1 is 3 halves. So I'm going to get a 2 thirds in front plus c. Don't forget, we still have to add the half in. Um, so I'm going to rewrite, so I don't, I'm not going to skip steps. So I'm going to go 2 sevenths, u to the 7 halves, minus 4 fifths, u to the 5 halves, plus 2 thirds, u to the 3 halves, plus c. And then I need to distribute the half in. So I get 1 half times 2 sevenths is 1 seventh, u to the 7 halves. 4 fifths times 1 half is going to be, take the 2's off, so it'll be 2 fifths, u to the 5 halves. And then this would be 1 half times 2 thirds is 1 third, u to the 3 halves, plus c. Oh, crud. You have to watch yourself. It's really easy to box and not put the x back in. So it's 1 7th, 1 plus x squared, 7 halves, minus 2 fifths, 1 plus x squared to the 5 halves, plus 1 third, 1 plus x squared to the 3 halves, plus g. That's that. Okay, what I might do is just leave the, I'm going to do one other example of an indefinite integral and do the three definite ones tomorrow and get you to work on the homework for this one first so you get these down better than when I throw numbers in it because it does make a difference. Example six. Looks so nice. But Super zoom. That I will miss. <laughs> so this one looks all fine. Looks all nice. So pretty. Just tan. Till you realize there's no actual antiderivative to just tan. Yeah. What? There isn't? Nope. So you just box it? So you box it and say we're done. Yeah. That's Not true. <laughs> we convert it to sines and coses because there are antiderivatives of sines and coses. There's just not an antiderivative on the table. It's a direct tan. Because remember, the derivative of sine is cos. The derivative of cos is negative sine. The derivative of tan is secant squared x. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotan. The derivative of secant is secant x tan x. And the derivative of tan x is secant squared x. Right? So none of those are tan. None of those are tan. I've lost childhood memories because I have derivatives of trig memorized, but that's okay. Okay. If I ever get like stuck somewhere and someone gives me a random derivative trig question, whew, I will leave and everyone else will be stuck there. Because if you, you may leave. Thank you. Okay. Tan is what over what? Sine x over cos x. Now, the trick is, is u cos or is u sine? Remember, whichever one you pick, if you take the derivative of it, it needs to cancel off the rest. I'm going to try cos. Because the, deriv the derivative of cos is what? Negative sine. The negative one we can deal with, right? The negative sine is not a problem, but I need the sine dx to replace, correct? So if I go u equals cos x, plus I want this, I don't want something down here. I want it to get, get, get out of my life. So, so du equals well, I want to uh, negative sine x dx, but I need to just replace sine x. I'm going to divide by negative 1. So I'm going to get negative du equals sine x dx. So, 
My bottom coast is going to become a U. Sine x dx becomes what? I'm going to leave this as a 1. Sine x dx becomes negative 1 du. And I can take the negative 1 and do what with it? Take it up. Wait a second. I have a 1 over U, which is just a U to the negative 1. It's as if Ms. Left talked about this earlier. Wait, I'm going to raise the power of 0. Now I'm going to divide by 0. It's long. Right? Because this is u to the 1. If I bring it up here, it becomes u to the negative 1. Exponent laws of grade 10 are not your friend. That's what I've learned. If there's ever any place where you guys struggle, it's usually exponent laws from grade 10. Okay. So we raise it. We have u to the negative 1. We add 1. 0. Divide by 0. Hmm. We've discussed this. Something is up. Oh, it's a lawn. So we go negative 1 bracket, lawn, absolute value of u, and then plus c. And then we can replace our u. Negative 1, lawn what? Cos x plus c. Or we can, I don't know why I put a bracket. I'm just literally going to rewrite it. <laughs> Okay. I'll put the problems first. So problem 21, 27, 33. Have I posted the answers for section 5? No? I know, I know I did, but I don't know if I did it for section 5. Forty-three, fifty-one, fifty-five, six, seven, and fourteen. 